Hey y'all, Stephen Roselle here, and I realized recently that I never posted a recording of a uh, quick rig demo, uh, which was introduced in 2016 extension two, and then kind of rolled into 2017, Maya that is. Uh, the character that I'm working with, by the way, here is the Garad character from Witcher 3, which was made by CD Projekt Red. So we wanted to give them a quick plug because they were nice enough to let us use this character for lots of our demos. You've probably seen him by now. Uh, what I want to show is an auto rigging tool that was added in 2016 extension 2, and it's called Quick Rig. And it basically allows you to take a series of meshes, just parts and pieces of your character, and then uh, if this could be a single mesh, or this could be multiple meshes. And then with a one click method, you can basically go in and it'll automatically, under the hood, voxelize your mesh. It will find the appropriate joints, in other words, all the key humanoid joints, and then it will build a skeleton, build a rig, and then also do the skinning. So now I've basically got a fully bound and fully deformed character with uh, the appropriate skeleton. And this is an HIK, you know, FKIK skeleton that I could go in and just start keyframing directly if I wanted to. So this is kind of targeted at somebody maybe who doesn't have a lot of rigging experience, who just wants to build a quick rig uh, on the fly without having to, you know, you know, become a rigger. But you can also use this in stages, which could be potentially useful if you are a character rigger or if you're a character TD and you want to just use parts and pieces of this, you really can. So what the way it works is you basically take all your meshes and you go into step-by-step -step mode and you just put those meshes into the geometry section here and that just tells it what it needs to voxelize basically. And then you could go through each step. So the next step would be to create guides. Under guides, you have the ability to create, for instance, multiple spine joints. So let's say I wanted four instead of the default one. You could add, add extra neck joints as well if I wanted to do that. Um, and then you just say create and it'll build the initial joint placement for your character. Uh, so it, again, it finds all the body parts, but you know, for the back, it may not be perfect. So this is a case where I can actually go in and I can start to manipulate the spine joints to more appropriately line with my character. So it's very smart, but it's not perfect. So uh, this is, you know, an example, like it does finds the shoulder really well, even though this is pretty complex geometry. With the clavicle, it's, it's not smart enough to know where it needs to be placed other than kind of the volumetric center. So you can actually start to manipulate the placement of these if you want to be higher or more in. And then you can mirror that over the other side and you can see that copies that over to the, from the right to the left. So all this did was it basically placed joints that haven't been parented. So you can, can think of these as like locators. But um, the next stage is once I get the placement correct, uh, I could use my own custom tools to actually build a skeleton on top of this. Um, you know, just simply by going in basically and, and just doing some parenting operations where I can take one joint and I can parent it to another and there's a skeleton. So you could write a script that would do that. Uh, or if I undo a few steps, you can actually just use the rest of the tool to to get a little bit farther down uh, down the stretch. So I can come in here and I can say I want to do um, where is it the rig character generation, and I can either generate just the skeleton, um, or I can go in and I can generate the skeleton and the control rig. So if I just want to generate the skeleton, I can actually say I don't want to do uh, T stance, or I do want to do T stance. I could do that, or I could just say in here, I want to do the whole thing with the rig, and that will create the skeleton with the appropriate number of joints and then auto-align the rig based on those previous placement joints that I had done. And now you can see that I've got you know the appropriate number of spine joints in here that I needed. Uh, I've got uh, you know controllers at every level, so I've got hip controllers, feet controllers, but I don't have any, any skinning. So you could use this rig as it is, or you could just use this as a way of creating the skeleton and then you could build your own custom rig on top of it, or maybe you could use a, a, another automated rigging tool on top of it, and all you really care about is the skeleton. Now, you could take this one step further, of course, now after all this is done. The next thing I could do is I could basically go in and I could set a different skinning method. By default, it uses geodesic voxel, which is uh, kind of the best you know, one-click skinning algorithm out there. Uh, and then there is uh, the ability to preset or rather change the settings so that you could use other skinning methods if you want to use heat map or something. But once you choose your skinning settings, then you just say, okay, we'll finish the job. And now it will go in, it'll do the geodesic voxel bind. And sure enough, now I have a fully bound character. So it's a pretty cool little tool. So it does some really uh, impressive stuff. 
And like I said, it has a lot of just built-in functionality with the rig itself. Now you can use that or, or not, but it's there if you need it. So again, a lot of people don't realize that you can do this kind of step-by-step -step mode. It's, it makes it a much more interesting tool. Now, a question I get asked all the time is, can this deal with creatures? Can this deal with wings? Or can this deal with uh, things like antennas or maybe uh, you know, multiple limbs? And the answer is no. Currently, this is purely bipedal. Currently, this only works with humanoid characters. But that would be awfully cool if we could go in and modularize this somewhere. But that, that's not quite where it's at right now. But one important thing I forgot to, to mention is that because this is using HIK, not only is this kind of a, a ready to go rig in terms of just animation, but HIK can easily be animated through mocap. So if you have a motion capture skeleton or a library of motion capture, you can come in here, for instance, the content browser, you can just find where your, your source files are. So I've got, uh, let's just pick a fight sequence here. I'll bring that in to my scene. Uh, and you'll see here that I've got this animation of this character. I don't know what that is, but he's doing something. So let's say I want to apply it here. These are both HIK compatible. So all I have to do is just take my character and then feed in the mocap sequence. And now he's just automatically going to follow that. Now I can offset him a little bit just so we can compare these. But now you can see that he's just automatically got animation applied to him um, because this is all based on HIK. So pretty cool really i mean the, the only thing i would need to do here would be just a little bit of skinning correction you know just using some weight painting and maybe uh, an additional deformer or two uh, but for the most part you know i went from a raw character with no skeleton or anything to a fully animatable fully animated character in you know just a matter of, of minutes really so it's pretty cool uh, all right thanks for your time talk to you later bye